Hey, it's Bran. Today we're gonna go full anime. And I know last time we sculpted Goku and it looked pretty cool and all, but he looked like he belonged in a PS2 game. So the goal for today is we're gonna try and translate this 2D image to 3D, but in the end try to make it look like it's 2D and not 3D. This is my first attempt at something like this, so it should be fun. So I would usually sculpt, then retopo the head, but this time I wanted to try modeling this anime head the same way that I've seen it been done in a bunch of other time-lapse videos. So the basic idea is that we take a single vert and outline the front of the face, then outline the profile in side view. Then we model a circle around the eye and extrude it out. Same thing with the mouth, and now that we have some landmarks, we can start bridging everything together. Now I've never done this before, so while modeling this face, I was actually watching a time-lapse video by Kumo Blender to see how she managed to get these shapes that I'm looking for. After I get the face mask region finished, I dropped in a UV sphere and a cylinder to act as the back of the head and the neck. I'm using these shapes as a guide to snap to. So I start extruding from the face and work my way around the head and down the neck. Once I finish up, I hide the mirror modifier to model the mouth sack. Then I take the verts around the eye, extrude them back, and merge them into a single vert. Once I'm down the neck, it's business as usual going into the body block out. Getting the overall silhouette down with subdivided cubes. If you're interested in an in-depth video on how I block out, there is a link in the description below. Oh, and the, the reference that I'm using for this is from The Master Guide to Drawing Anime by Christopher Hart. It's all over Pinterest when you search for anime character sheet and it has close enough proportions to get us started. Once I'm done blocking out, I join all the pieces together and remeshed, then did a bit of refinement in sculpt mode. Now that the body is sculpted, I'll use this as a snapping guide return to my head, and start extruding from the neck down. From here on, it's just basic retopology using a shrink wrap and snapping. To get her eye shape, I move my reference eye behind the model's head and use the grab brush to nudge it into the right shape. Then we take a single vert, extrude around to make the lashes, a little grab brushing to make it sit on the eye, same thing for the eyelid fold and the eyebrow. The iris is made from a circle, you can get this by enabling the extra objects add-on in your preferences. Extrude scale the circle down, leaving loops for the outline and the pupil. I made the lower eye shine by adding in a loop and then beveling the bottom lines. As you might have noticed, I've been adding flat colors to the model along the way. The materials I use are as basic as you can get, just an emission straight into the output. This gives us a flat, even color that ignores light. So this means no shadows. So even though the eyes are actually holes carved into the head, since there's no sense of depth, they actually appear to be regular eyes that our iris mesh can just float around in. To get an idea of what I have so far, I added a sphere, cut it in half, and pulled from the bottom verts down to make some temporary hair. After that, I made a few bangs with some planes. I also tried the inverted hole method for making the outlines. This is done by making a black material and checking back face culling adding that material to the object you want your outline on, and then adding a solidify modifier, changing the offset to positive one, choose your thickness, I usually go with 0.04, check flipped normals, selecting the material offset, this number points to the material you want to use in the material stack. As long as your material is in the bottom of the stack, this number can be exactly or any number above the number of materials assigned to the object. So even if you put in 99, it'll default to the last material in the stack. If you want a bit of variations in your line, you can also play with the clamp slider. If your model or sculpt is made up of multiple objects, you'll have to do this process for each and every mesh that you want an outline on. You don't have to make new materials each time. Hi. That was my phone. You don't have to make a new material each time unless you want different colors. But you do have to add the material to the mesh and add the solidify modifier to the mesh and then edit those settings. Okay, she's been naked long enough, so let's make Akko some clothes. Clothes can easily be made by duplicating faces from the body mesh and scaling them up a bit. Starting from the lowest layer and working up, I start making her collared shirt. And since she has clothing layered on top of this shirt, we don't have to model the entire thing, only what's gonna be seen. 
I used a plane with a mirror modifier to make the collar of her robe, and since her hood is a very similar shape, I duplicated it and scaled it up, then tweaked it a bit, adding and changing colors as I go. The rest of her robe and boots are made the same way by grabbing faces from the body, duplicating, scaling, and modifying. I made a bevel reference from a curve rhombus. You can get more shapes in your add curve menu by enabling extra objects curves. I added a curve path using the first curve as a bevel and started wrapping it around her head, duplicating to add more hair until the head was covered. Uh, I'd forgotten to model the ears, so I selected a few of the faces in the ear area and extruded them out. No fancy details, uh, the silhouette is the only thing that matters. I did inset and pull the center of the ear in though, the, that way the outline would appear from the side view. A few more accessories to finish up like the belt from a cylinder, the D-links from a plane and a cube, and uh, the wand was another cylinder. The hat brim was a circle that was shaped using proportional editing, and the pointy part on the top was a curve that I bent into a hook shape. After I got the shape that I needed, I converted the curve to a mesh and then sculpted it into place, and then duplicated a few of the loops to create the band. So I want to mimic this character art of Akko that I've been using as a reference this whole time. And to get her into this pose, I added in a Rigify rig, placed the bones, generated and parented the mesh parts to that rig, and then started posing. Now while posing, I noticed that the arms were acting a little funky. I probably placed elbows in the wrong place or had some bones rolled in the wrong direction or, or something. But since my aim wasn't to make something that I was going to reuse, I decided to go the destructive route and pose the hands, apply the armature to those hands, and then repose the arms. These droopy sleeves were giving me a bit of trouble and took some convincing in sculpt mode to get them to go where I needed them to be. To get those couple of extra folds that are on that arm that's resting on the hip, I duplicated and separated some of the geometry from the arm and then scaled up one side and placed it to where it's coming out of the arm a bit. And because of the way our shading and our solidify lines work, it makes it look like it's a part of the arm. And the final piece of the puzzle is the shading. To get a real-time shading on the face that looks the way it looks in an anime, you can change your material to a cell tune shading one. You'll also have to do some normal editing, but for still characters, you can just paint the shadows in, which is what I did. After unwrapping the parts that I intend to paint on, I edited my material to mix with another color using an image mask as the factor. So wherever I paint on this mask, it's gonna reveal the second color. Mimicking the reference, I painted in the shadows, just like the Goku sculpt from last time. This was the most fun part. As you're adding in the shadows, the model goes from okay to, hey, that's pretty good. I almost forgot Akko's little ponytail, so I threw one together with curves. So all of the shadows don't have to be painted in. If your topology allows for it, you can just select faces and assign a different colored material. Just like here on the inside of the hair, I converted the curves to mesh so that I can have access to the faces, selected the faces that I wanted to be a different color in the edit mode, and assigned a different material. Now, this works great for, uh, for making shadows that are cast by the hat. The loops for the lower part of the hair weren't running in a convenient direction, so I unwrapped them and just painted the shadows in. Oh, and if you're noticing thin lines that isn't getting painted, it's probably where you marked a seam. You have to go into the image editor and overpaint past the UV islands. So with that final bit of painting in the shadows, we are done. And here she is. This is my very first attempt to try and seriously replicate an anime style. I really liked the way she came out and felt like I learned a few more NPR things with this model. If you'd like to explore the blend file to see how this was made, you can find it on my Gumroad. And if you'd like to hang out with us, you can come join us on Discord. All the links are in the description. Hope you enjoyed this breakdown. Tell me what you think in the comments below. All right. Bye.